Oh my goodness, like they are both such solid options. We can only have one in there and literally going to change the shape of my entire bag. Uh, I don't know. What is up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. We are back with episode two of the Building Your Bag series. Recently, I had the opportunity to join Team Innova Champion Discs, and with that, well, I have to build an entirely new bag. I've got a few guiding principles that I'm using, and my hope is that you can use these same guiding principles to help you make your bag a little more efficient and effective. Now, I'm not made of money, and I've got lots of friends helping me try out certain molds and certain plastic types, but the biggest help has been from the team over at otbdiscs.com. OTB is home to a massive selection of disc golf discs and accessories. And one of the best ways you can support the channel is by heading over to otbdiscs.com and using code RCDiscGolf at checkout to not only save yourself on some free shipping, but maybe find that nest disc that's going to take your game to the next level. Innova has some amazing mid-range options, so let's dive into the field test. When it comes to throwing mid-ranges, I feel comfortable throwing them from anywhere about 250 feet to 320 feet. But within that distance, I have really five shot shapes that I'm looking for. The first is the obvious straight option with a tiny bit of fade at the end. Moving on the overstable side of things, I still am looking for something a little straight, but it can fight some wind and have an overstable finish. The third option on that side is an extremely overstable disc. Some might consider it a utility option, but I'm just looking for something that's a little longer than my pig or whatever overstable pun approach option that you chose. Wow, those words were really hard to string out. On the understable side of things, I want something that's going to have some turn to it, but also have a enough stability to fight back and not necessarily just turn all the way into oblivion. But also as the fifth option, I do want a disc that can turn and keep turning and turning and going to the right as long as possible when we're talking about a backhand. With these five shot shapes, well, I guess we're looking for five discs. Let's start with the overstable option. In the end of a lineup, there are two reptiles that stand head and shoulders above the rest of the lineup. Those are the Cayman and the Gator. These King Crocs are the definition of overstable. What I'm looking for here, it doesn't matter if I throw it way far out to the right, I know that this disc it wants to get back, and both of these did an extremely solid job when it came to that. I also know that I'm not perfect, so sometimes I'm going to early release, and I want to see just how far to the left this is going to fight when I throw it on a backhand. Now, I don't just backhand this disc, I also love forehanding it, and the major difference between the Cayman and the Gator is the bead on the bottom of the disc. They both have a flat profile, and this bead should be the only difference in the hand, and because the pig is beadless, you would think I lean more towards the Cayman. However, one of the reasons I love bagging a disc like this is for the short Anheuser Flex forehand. Some of you are saying, Robbie, you hypocrite. You say don't throw Anheuser Flex forehands. No, I'm all about throwing an Anheuser Flex forehand when the shot is called for. Just saying if it's the only way you throw a forehand, well, you're going to have a bad time eventually. When I threw both of these molds on that Anheuser Flex forehand, I noticed that the Cayman was more likely to fall into the Anheuser and less likely to fight out of it. The Gator had a little more teeth to it and wanted to fade out, and that's exactly what I'm looking for in that option. So even though it has a beat, I think for that reason, it's going to win out over the Cayman. Now, as we move to our next flight path, I think it's important to talk about a major guiding principle that's going to stick with us for the rest of the bag. And that is the idea of subconscious confidence when it comes to minimalizing the number of molds in your bag, which means I play better when I have less molds that I have to figure out. One of the easiest ways to do this is having the same mold in a variety of plastics and a variety of stages of wear. So when checking out the flight paths that we're looking for, I really believe that one mold should be able to answer all all three of the middle options. So first up to the T was an Innova Classic and something that most of us have owned at one point in our life. That's right. We're talking about the Shark. I was pretty pumped to give the Shark a try in a premium plastic. While it was really fun to throw, it didn't necessarily have the variety that I was looking for, and I knew that it was gonna be pretty tough to track it down in a lot of the premium plastics, and for that reason, I had to move away from the Shark. So, I'm sorry, Jaws. Looks like the C is not for me. If you know the end of a lineup, there are really two molds that come in a variety of plastics that I believe could fill all three of those shot shapes. The first is the tried and true classic, the Rock. The Rock comes in so many plastic types, and and they've made so many variations to the rock mold over time. I knew that this one mold could offer so much for me, but it had a strong competition due to my history of trying out 
the lion. This king of the jungle has a special place in my heart because it was one of the first mid ranges that I ever became super confident in. And I knew that it was gonna be a tight battle between the two of these. So I did what any sane man would do. I took him to the field and just started throwing them like crazy. The more that I threw these molds, I was testing to see how they handled torque, how far I could throw them and how comfortably I could throw them. One of the most shocking things was how understable the halo lion actually flew in comparison to other forms of the lion. Every time I threw a rock, I kept surprising myself at how well the shot was going and then a headwind rolled in. The most overstable version of the lion that I found was a champion lion and the most overstable version of the rock I was finding was a luster champion rock three. As a quick aside for what the three means on certain end of a mold, head down to the link in the description below and check out that article. I noticed that the luster champion rock three held up way better in a headwind rather than the champion lion which happened to be flying really straight. Now this isn't a bad thing because having a straight option is definitely good but because of the subconscious confidence that I'm looking for for, I noticed that if I went with the lion, that I was only going to be able to cover two of the shot shapes that I was actually trying to fit. I also, in doing my research, realized that the Rock X3 exists, and because I love the AVR X3, I figured maybe I should give the Rock X3 a look. So it's been real, friends. Sorry, Halo Plastic. You are so pretty, and we're just gonna have to look forward to using you in other molds which means we only had one slot left to fill, and that was our super understable option. When looking at the end of a lineup, there are four options available to us. The first is a kite, and unfortunately, this sounds like a perfect disc, but they're not readily available, so I'm gonna have to go anti-Mary Poppins here and not go fly a kite. Our next option was the Wombat 3, one of my top recommendations for newer players, and in max weight, I knew it would be a great flyer, but I think Garrett Gerthy has like all of the max weight Wombat 3s that are out there, and since one of our guiding principles is making sure that we throw discs that are readily available, looks like it's it's not going to be the Wombat 3 for us either, leaving us with the Stingray and the Mako 3. I absolutely love the Stingray. In fact, this Stingray was the first mid-range that I ever purchased for myself back in 2012. I can throw this thing on some crazy hyzer flips, and if I throw it flat, I know that it's just going to keep turning into oblivion, which is exactly what we're looking for here, but it's not readily available, and they don't make the Stingray and Star Plastic anymore. So I headed back to the sea, checking out the Mako 3. Out of the box, it's a neutral flyer, and it's not necessarily the super understable option we were looking for. But when I got a hold of a Mako 3 that I've had for a little bit, I noticed that it could be that understable option I'm looking for. It's just going to take a little bit of time. It's not only a great option on backhand hyzer flips and slow turnovers, but it's a laser on a forehand that you can get to flip up to flat and fly crazy straight. So checking out all of those options, what does that leave us with in the back? For our overstable option, it's going to be the Joel Freeman Gator 3. I love the Gator. I love how it feels in the hand and supporting Joel is just icing on the cake. Next up for that straight to overstable option, option, we have the Champion Rock 3. This is a phenomenal disc and brand new out of the box. It definitely flies in that overstable option. And I'm sure over time, it's going to get a little more straight. And when it does, hopefully the Rock X3 is going to fill that slot. For our straight option, we have the KC Pro Rock. Now for all of you rock stars out there, I know there's a little bit of a difference between the Rancho Rocks, the Santa Cruz Rocks, and all of those other different types of KC Pro Rocks. But I honestly don't know how to tell the difference. So if you can let me know in the comments below, that would be super helpful because I've noticed that this purple rock is a little more understable than the yellow one I was throwing in the test videos. This thing already flies super straight and I'm sure as it beats in, it's going to fly in that straight to understable slot. So I'm pumped for it to stay in the bag for a really long time, which means in that fourth slot currently, we have a Mako 3. This is a fantastic disc. And like I said, it's not necessarily where I want it to be. I know it's gonna beat in over time. And as soon as it reaches that, I'm gonna start working on another Mako 3 just to have some backups ready to go in case the worst thing happens. And I happen to lose this disc, which definitely happens because I lose discs pretty often. Thanks OTB for hooking me up. Wow. Meaning our fifth contender in the bag is going to be the Stingray. It's only going to be there for a little bit until this Mako finds itself nice and seasoned and ready to go. But in certain tournaments and courses, I know I'm going to need that slow turning right shot. And so I need to have it in the bag to finish out this season and be ready to go as soon as possible. With these five discs in the bag, I feel incredibly confident to tackle any line in any course that I happen to come across. Do you think I made the right choices or do you think I overlooked certain molds or maybe didn't give them a fair chance? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if there's other options I should consider. I am loving this series and stoked to continue building this bag and bringing you guys along for the journey. I am going to warn you, next week could have some hypocrisy to it because I'm testing out a very specific disc that I swore for a long time I would never throw. If you have any guesses as to what it is, let me know in the comments below once again. I want the comment section to be a great chance for us to interact as we grow and improve together to make our bags more efficient and more effective. I want to say thank you for stopping by and I really do hope you have an absolutely amazing week. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.